What is up, my quarantine party people? We're about to get crazy today. I am so excited to see a bunch of you in here. Give me just a moment. I'm going to open up the chat so I can make sure to read all the comments. And while you're waiting, uh, tell me a fun fact about yourself. How about a, a hidden skill or talent? Mine is I had a job uh, one summer where it was a skate park and they're just there was no air conditioning it had to happen or happened that there were a lot of flies there and there was a bag of rubber bands and i got really good at uh, taking flies out of the rubber bands fun fact for you give me a fun fact all right all right all right yeah I'm in. Well, guys, I'm so excited to see you here. I hope everyone is doing well today. Let me know. How does everything sound? Everything good? I, I changed some of the configuration, so if there's any latency or anything, let me know. Let's see. Can you do any sweet skateboard tricks? Oh, dude. No. I could try. I'm really good at almost pulling them off and falling, but I haven't tried in a while. Hashtag quarantine goals. All right, give me a sec. Let's read through the chat. Hey, what's up? All right, we got someone from Brazil. Dude, Brazil, you guys always show up, man. You represent. I tell you what, and we know what I love. Sorry, random tangent while we're waiting for people to load in here. You know what I love about Brazil is you guys, you love your country. Like you never, I don't know, everyone I meet from Brazil, they're just like, it's the greatest place ever. And it's so fun. I love that. Way to, way to show up and represent. Dip, what's up? Robert, Susan in the house from Ottawa again. All right, all right from british columbia wow crazy jesus what's up doma doma am i saying that right doma what's up kin booty i hope i'm saying that right what's up got some some fire emotes in here oh man you guys are going crazy airbrushing huh that's a, okay wow that's cool i'm better horseman than a musician Dude, there are a lot of things that I'm better at than being a musician. S sadly, I wish that uh, that wasn't the case, but uh, it's where my heart is. I'm a musician by heart, uh, network engineer by profession. Wow, crazy. Krelzy. Hey, awesome. Thank you so much. Cooking? Or you, wait, you cook on a train? That's a fun job. If that's your job, or is that just like a random thing? Like you just get on trains and cook? Because that would be pretty cool too. <laughs> I can do tricks. Man, you guys, you're, you're bringing it, you're representing all kinds of people in here. Wow, so good to see you. Oh, man, what's up? Dose. Oh, you guys, awesome. I'm so excited you're here. Okay, well, here's what we got going on today. We are, oh, yeah, cameras right here. I changed my setup, so now I'm looking in the wrong place. We are going crazy today, which I know, shocker, because we never do that, right? But we're going in, um, we're going to do a little bit of review, a little bit more detail on some of the things we've talked about. And then I basically, I'm so excited for the third section of what we're covering today because every time I go over this stuff, uh, people just like really freak out. They're like, this is so cool. I've always wondered how to do this. So um, let's uh, just do a quick recap. Okay, so uh, let me know in the chat who has not been to one of these streams yet. Is there anyone this is the first stream you're catching? Let me know. Marlene in the house. What's up, Marlene? And as always, guys, just so you know, today we will be doing a giveaway at the end of the stream, which is also very exciting, getting some awesome gear in your hands at the end of the stream. Okay, so it looks like everyone's been here. That's great. Let me see. Oh, okay, Susan, you're first. Awesome, right on. Hey, Juan, what's up? And, and Doma, your first one. Okay, wow, Deluxe, all you guys. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to quickly, uh, and uh, Alper, Am I saying that right? I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm butchering these, I'm so sorry and let me know. Shy, it's your first one. Wow, cool. We got a lot of first timers in here. Okay, so this is our third stream. Uh, basically, I'm well on my way to, uh, you know, earning my uh, YouTube professor tenure. No. Uh, but let's see. Unfortunately, I can't find the hype mic here in Turkey. Uh, honestly, right now, you can't really find the hype mic anywhere. It is like, it's like gold, basically. They're really hard to get. But you should see some more uh, showing up very soon. So check your local dealers. Um, okay, so recap. Here's what we did the first stream. We talked about stream etiquette. 
did a lot of uh, just like little tips and tricks and life hacks on how to make what you've got work for you, which is, as I've said in some of the other streams, you know, for the people that have been here, that is basically what I'm doing right now. And I'm realizing that uh, I should adjust this so that it's not covering my face. There we go. So basically I'm doing right now what uh, I'm talking about in the stream, working with what I got. So if you haven't been to a stream yet, here's what I got going on. I'm using like a 10 year old, eight year old, some webcam. It's like 720p, it's heartbreaking for me because I love like really going in and getting awesome video stuff um, and audio, but uh, you know, making it work. I basically have rearranged my office here. Uh, I've turned it into a, a little bit of a man cave, which thankfully my wife's awesome. And she let me do that, put up some cool lights and whatnot. And uh, yeah, just making it work. So that was kind of the first stream is how to get a uh, good or you know, the best audio quality you can get, the best video quality you can get with what you have. And there is one thing that I didn't get to mention in that first stream. And I've thought about this a bunch, so I'm just going to mention it now. And that is if you don't have a camera, you're like, man, you know, I'm talking about working with what you got, but I don't even have a camera. You've got a smartphone more than likely. If you don't, I'd be very surprised. And your smartphone camera is likely, especially if it's an iPhone and it's a newer one, very, very good. I know there are a lot of uh, phones out there that have really good cameras, but I'm familiar with the iPhone. It's phenomenal. And you can use your iOS device, uh, your iPhone, and I'm sure probably your Android and, and all the other smartphones out there. You can use that as your webcam. So if that is something you're interested in knowing how to do and you want me to cover it, let me know. Uh, that was the first stream. And then at the end of the first stream, we did a little recap or we did like a little, I guess you can call it a tutorial on how to stream and get, you know, the best audio quality with Zoom and how to stream onto Instagram. Now, we didn't do a deep dive into those, but just the basics for the people that wanted to know how to stream uh, by the time they left. Now, last week, our second stream, wow, we um, we covered a, a remarkably advanced topic. Okay, yeah, you are interested in that? Okay, very cool, uh, in the uh, iPhone camera, so we may get into that. Probably not today, but we might do that one next week. Um, last week, we basically covered an advanced topic, and that is how to stream very high-quality audio and video remotely for capturing and recording. So you can interact in real time with someone in really high quality video and record it. And you can do the same thing with audio. You can actually stream audio in or out of your DAW, like your, your digital audio workstation, Logic, uh, Pro Tools, Ableton, whatever you're using. You can actually stream audio in and out in basically real time, almost no latency at very high quality. And you can record people remotely. So uh, most of you know that uh, I was fortunate enough to get to start a podcast with uh, an absolute legend, a guy named Bob Clear Mountain. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He's going to blow your mind. He's the most famous audio engineer in the world. Um, and we started a podcast recently. And, you know, because of the given circumstance, uh, we're quarantined, right? We can't really meet up and record new episodes. So I actually used this method that we covered uh, from last week and recorded him remotely. So that was really cool. And you can hear it on the most recent podcast that was just published. If you are interested in checking the podcast out, that would be awesome. I'd love some feedback on that. Yeah, he is a legend. And the, the podcast, it's available on all the platforms that uh, one would listen to podcasts on, I think, unless there's some really crazy ones I don't know about, but I'm pretty sure I got it out just about everywhere. It's called Clear Mountains Domain. Clear Mountain, one word, domain. So check it out and let me know if you like it. Drop us a like, a review, all that good stuff. Okay, so that's just a kind of a quick recap of what we've done the last uh, two weeks. Here's what we're doing today, guys. So we have, I've broken it up into kind of three categories. I'm not going to go super in-depth into all of them because part of what I cover in these live streams, these this whole learning from home experience it's based around what you guys are asking about. And one of the things that I wanna do is sometimes you don't know what to ask if you don't know it exists, right? So I like to kind of plant the seed and let you know here are some other options and things you can do. And then if I get a lot of questions about it, I'll do a deeper dive in a future episode. But first thing we're gonna cover is how to improve the audio quality of your live streams. And that one, not real hard, but there are just some things I wanna cover, some basics. Second, we're gonna do how to improve the video quality of your live streams. That's gonna be a pretty quick one. Um, I'm gonna to touch on some things. I wanna make sure you're aware of things like being able to use your iPhone as your camera. And the third thing is the thing I'm most excited about at the end, and that's how to improve the experience of your live streams. I'm, <laughs> it's, 
it's just that thing that every single time uh, I cover it, people are like, are you kidding me? I didn't even know this was possible. That's so cool. So let's jump right in. Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Oh, right on. Ali, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm glad that, uh, that it helped. And uh, Krelzy, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Juan. I appreciate it, bud. Um, okay, Susan. Yep, let's do it. Let's dive in. So starting off, how to improve the audio quality of your live streams. So it's not like, it's not rocket science, right? There are a couple things like the microphone that you're using. Now, obviously I'm using a hype mic right now and uh, I, I think it sounds great. I don't know how it sounds for you guys. Uh, I have a noise or something in the other room, but uh, in the first uh first live stream I did I actually talked about how to kind of work around some of that stuff which again like I'm the king of breaking my own rules and not doing what I say but I want to make sure you guys know how to do it so check that out if you're interested but the microphone you're using is really important now you have a couple different options when we're talking microphones you have USB mics and you have analog mics or mics that connect via XLR um, if you don't know what an XLR cable is actually I have one right here let me grab it and I'll show you somewhere in here Maybe not. Maybe I actually did that thing where I like clean up and organize my cables. So I thought it was right there. But you have a USB microphone. Now, a USB microphone is basically like hype mic, for example, which I'm using again right here. It's basically an audio interface and a microphone in the same device. So I'm not having to run this microphone into another device with mic pre's and converters and then into my computer. I'm just running straight out of this. It's got the mic pre's built in. It's got a converter built in and it's doing everything for me all in one device. This mic specifically, just since we're talking about it, uh, the reason I'm a big fan of it is it's got built-in analog compression. Now I know that's not something new because I think I've probably mentioned that uh, in all the streams so far, but it makes it sound incredible. Now, let me give you a little bit of an example since we haven't done this, uh, so you can kind of see what compression sounds like. I'm going to mute my mic here, and I'm going to turn the compression off so you can hear the difference in my voice. Okay, so this is with no compression. I mean, wow, right? L let me get let me get some wows in the chat because massive difference. I'm gonna put it on the next compression setting, which is setting one. Let you hear that. Okay, this is with compression setting one. Now I'm gonna go to setting two, which is what I typically use. Okay, this is compression, yeah, scary. This is compression setting too. This is typically what I use uh, for, at least for live streams. I, I have different compression settings that I like for different purposes. If I'm recording an instrument, if I'm just speaking. Yeah, I know, it's, it exactly, exactly. It's, it's a huge difference and people don't really get it oftentimes till they hear it, which is why I wanted you to get to experience it. Now we have one more compression setting. <laughs> what? I know, it's, this is why you can't find these like anywhere right now. Uh, it's like their gold. This is the only microphone in the world that has this built in. So um, I'm going to mute the mic again, and then I'm going to change the compression setting three and let you hear that. And now you can see why we call this setting ludicrous mode, because it is crazy crunched, but it sounds so good. It, it gives you the sound of the, the radio voice, the podcast voice. So that's why this is so popular right now for podcasting and vocalists, everything, everything in the world has compression on it, all audio, you know, it's usually done after being recorded, or sometimes it's added in your digital audio workstation, Logic or Pro Tools, whatever, um, but this mic actually gives you the ability to add it, and it's analog, it's not synthesized, it's not a plug-in, so really cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to uh, my normal setting, and there we go. Okay, so let's see, a uh, couple questions here. Huge difference, it really is. Okay, how does one, the black one, uh, work into iPad or whatever? I've only used it with a MacBook Pro, main uh, condenser mic plugged in. Okay, so um, I will answer this really quick and I'll probably uh, park most questions. I, I have a, a question parking lot. Um, I will park a lot of questions and save them to the end unless they're related to what we're talking about, but I, I will give you this one real quick around. So. Um, you need a lightning cable and a power adapter. Um, I don't, I've, I thought that the black version of one came with it, but maybe not, maybe not. Um, I could be mistaken. And I guess it depends on what release of the uh, 
ver of that version of one you had because I guess there, now that I think about it, there was a version that did have uh, the lightning cable and the power adapter. We call it the iOS kit, and there was one that didn't. So um, you can actually head over to our website and pick that up if we have them in stock. Because you know people have been going bananas, you know, buying stuff, but uh, we may have some in stock. So you can check that out. And then basically all you do is you, you need to give it power. The nice thing about the black version of one is it's got a battery bay. So if you put batteries in it, you don't actually have to plug it in, which is nice. It gives you the ability to do a lot of remote recording. Uh, it's got a built-in microphone that is truly mind-blowing. It is so, so good. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about that. Okay, a couple other questions here. Had the hype mic. Uh, you sitting too most of the time. Awesome. Okay, the, let's see. The duet with... I'm guessing iPhone or iPad or both. Yeah, if you have a Duet 2 iOS, you can use it with both, and it's the same thing. You need the power adapter and the lightning cable. That's it. Okay, so microphone. You, you heard the differences in compression, and, and I mean, right away when you hear it, you see why it makes such a huge difference and why I always talk about it. Until you hear it, you just, you know, you don't get it. Now, if you don't have uh, a USB microphone, and there are a lot of them out there that honestly don't really sound good, I came across a video yesterday, uh, this guy on YouTube, he is, I think his name was like the voiceover professor or something like that. And it was just one of those recommended videos on YouTube. And in the picture, I saw an Apogee mic and it was, uh, it's not even a hype mic. It was two versions back. And so I just watched a minute, a minute of this video. I was thinking, oh, like, I wonder what this guy's going to talk about. And he said, I'm a voiceover artist. I work with, you know, all kinds of, you know, like, he didn't say who, but he said, you know, big, big companies. Uh, and you could tell he's got a pretty nice setup. And he had a Neumann microphone, a TLM 103. And he said, you know, you've heard me for years bash on USB microphones. And that's because for years that they couldn't offer the quality that, um, you know, like a, a Neumann mic or, or a really nice studio quality condenser mic could offer. He said, I have to do this video to basically change everything that I've said because I just tried this mic and he was talking about the Apogee mic. It's a USB microphone. He goes, it's incredible. He goes, dare I say, basically, this is this is studio quality that I'm getting from a USB mic. He goes, I've never heard it didn't exist till this. So I thought that was pretty awesome. So if you're gonna go with um, an XLR microphone, that adds another level of complication, which is the next part I want to cover here. You need an audio interface. Um, obviously, I'm like, hey, get an Apogee audio interface. Uh, there is no question, in my opinion, they sound the best. If you want the best quality, which if you're recording something, you probably should. But if you don't have an uh, Apogee audio interface, you can still totally use it um, and look for an upgrade at some point. Unless, hey, maybe, maybe you have something that is really awesome. I'm just such an Apogee fan, and I, I really get nothing for saying this. Um, the main point of, of all these tutorials is really not, to, it's not an Apogee sales pitch, but I'm a gigantic Apogee fanboy, as you can probably tell, which is why I started working at Apogee 10 years ago, because the first time I heard a duet, I, w I, I had to, I lost it, basically. I had to remix everything I'd ever done. I'd been using an Mbox and an Mbox 2, and then I think I got an Mbox 3, and then I won a duet in a raffle. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I've heard people talk about Apogee before. And so I plugged it in and it just instantly blew my mind. I didn't know that quality like that existed. So that's why you'll hear me talk it up a lot. But uh, if you have an audio interface, you can connect a, an XLR microphone uh, via an XLR cable to your audio interface. If it's a studio microphone or a condenser microphone, it's going to need phantom power, which is uh, you'll oftentimes see like a little uh, 48 and uh, the letter V, it's 48 volts. It's, that's basically what you need to turn on to power a condenser microphone. And I won't go into the difference between condenser microphones and uh, dynamic microphones now, but just it's basically, think of it like a dynamic microphone. It's like a live microphone. It's what you'd use on stage in a noisy environment just to make your voice louder. Condenser microphone is if you really want to capture the quality like hype mic. Okay, next topic is... Uh, hmm... This, is, this this might lead us down a rabbit trail, but I'm going to just mention a few things and explain them. Loopback, Soundflower, Aggregate Device Mode, Low Latency Mixer in uh, a couple different ways. You have it in a bunch of Apogee products. You have a low latency mixer if you're using like an element series uh, interface or an uh, ensemble. You can use the Apogee Control app 
to basically run uh, a lot of plugins with almost no latency. You can do that and run it right into your stream in OBS, which I, the last three days, have probably helped three or four different people do that setup. And I actually have, uh, right after the stream, one of my buddies is doing, actually two of my friends are doing a concert for the Knitting Factory, and this is their setup, and it, it sounds so good. Um, Loopback is an application that's going to give you basically virtual channels. So, oh, it's such a rabbit trail. I might, I might save this one. A lot of you have heard of Loopback, and I've had a handful of people actually write me and ask me about it. It's great if you need to route audio from one place to another place. So let's say I am using Logic and I have a Logic session there, and I want to get my Logic audio into my broadcast, into what I'm using right now, which is OBS. If And by the way, if you don't know what OBS is, I, I covered that last week. Uh, it's just broadcasting software, basically. And there are a ton of options out there that are really good, and I'm actually going to suggest another one here in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, Loopback, Soundflower does the same thing. I'm, I'm gonna table that one for now, but I just wanna mention that there there's something involved there. Um, a couple of the things to keep in mind, and this is the last topic under audio quality, is uh, it, basically plugins. So you have the ability to add compression if you don't have a hype mic. You have the ability to add noise gates, effects, voice mods. Now that one is really fun for me, so let's take a, just a minute here. So voice mods, how the heck would I add a voice mod and what would it sound like? I thought about hooking this up, and then I was like, maybe maybe this is a little too nerdy for you guys, so we'll, we'll feel it out. If you guys really want to see this, I'll hook it up next week, but uh, I am a, a pretty avid gamer. I play video games a lot, rather enjoy them, and when I'm gaming, I use this guy right here. This is called a Go XLR. Let's see if I can get it in the shot. Yep. Uh, it's all backwards for me. There we go. So it's basically a little soundboard that's got all like full automation in it, and it's got a bunch of sounds programmed into it. So I have the ability to, to basically trigger samples that I've loaded in, trigger sounds, and set up a ton of voice modifications. So one of my favorite things to do when I'm, when I'm gaming is to mess with people, hop into a game with a bunch of random people and turn on a, a voice mod that makes my voice sound impossibly deep. I will never sound that way. Um, and it's so fun to talk to people because they just start laughing. They're like, oh my gosh, you have the lowest voice I've ever heard. And I'm like, you know, yeah, I know in, the, in my, not that's, you know, my, my, my version of my, my deep voice, but the uh, voice mods are really fun. If it's something you're interested in, in learning more about, we can definitely, we can nerd out. Let me know in the chat or in an email or in the questionnaire on our website. And we'll definitely <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. It makes a girl voice too. And we'll definitely cover that. So that sometimes I go that route too. But yeah, it is really fun. Great if you're doing something like a podcast because you can trigger sounds. Anything you're doing live, um, if you're doing a like a live radio show where people call in um, and even a live podcast because a lot of podcasts are recorded live, gives you the ability to do things like uh, trigger a funny noise every time something happens or like play a little sound intro to, to transition to the next segment of your show, whatever. So you also have the ability to, with the Go XLR, uh, sample sounds live. So I could, you know, basically uh, go into the sampling mode, hold on one button and, and do whatever, like, you know, let's get it. And then I can just trigger that over and over. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get it. So it's fun. It's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Super nerdy super nerdy. You're seeing the nerd come out, guys. Okay, so that's the quick overview of the audio. Uh, again, if you have any questions, let me know. We're going to move to video, and then we're going to spend the majority of time in the third section. So we are now jumping into how to improve the video quality of your live streams. Uh, this one we didn't touch on quite as much as audio in the first stream, but first thing we want to talk about is your camera. Okay, so as you know, uh, you have a lot of different options for cameras. The two that you hear everyone talk about are actual cameras or, or DSLR cameras, which uh, I love for video and live streams. <laughs> My voice is deep. Um, and then you have webcams, which is what I'm using right now. There are major differences between the two. And that's just what I wanna to touch on here. So when you're using uh, a, a camera for film, 
filming is, you know, term, it's all digital now, but you have lenses. Lenses are going to give you the ability to pick up lighting better. So you can see, I have some like, you know, nerdy lighting here in the background. It looks kind of washed out and I have the setting turned down so low. I mean, when I look at it, it's, it's hard to, you know, in the room even really see how it looks because I'm using a webcam. Webcams don't have great low light sensors. Um, if I had here with me uh, a DSLR, a Canon, a Sony, whatever, and a nice lens, I could add a few things. I could add a beautiful depth of field, uh, and I'll explain that in a moment, and I could basically pick up lighting much better. I would also have a wider, uh, yeah, looks so RGB. I, I would basically have a wider uh, shot as well, depending on the lens I was using. You just, you have a lot of options that you don't have um, with the webcam. So I wanna show you what that looks like. We're gonna hop over to the web browser here and go to, no, 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 there we go. So this is a streamer that uh, I like. He does a great job at the video side of streaming and that's because he's a professional video guy. I randomly came across this guy one day online. He has a ton of tutorials out uh, that I think are fantastic. So I hit him up and uh, you know, we may do some stuff together in the future. We'll see. But uh, I want to, I, I don't think I have any audio, but I want to play a minute of this because there are a few things I want to point out. So first off, okay, let's pause it. Do you guys see how behind him everything is kind of blurry and fuzzy? That's, he's created a really beautiful depth of field here. Also, his camera has a fantastic low light, or, um, uh, yeah, a low light sensor basically built into it. And if you're interested in knowing what cameras he uses, you can go to his channel. I think he's using a Sony a7S II and I can't remember what his other one is, but you see how his lights are so vivid looking in the background. If he had um, a webcam up like I have, it would look exactly the same as mine do back here. But because his low light sensor is really, really good, and he's got a great depth of field, it just makes it look so much cooler. Another thing I wanna point out, he does this, he was actually, I think the first person that I ever saw um, do this specific thing, and I totally stole this from him, and this is my setup uh, when I'm in the office. See how it's moving? His camera isn't stationary. He has a motorized slider that's moving very slowly, adding just a level of excitement. It's not stationary. Like mine, I'm sitting here, It my camera doesn't move. His is doing this very slow pan across this room. So, it, and you can see there are some jump cuts there because he's editing something, but it really adds a cool dimension. Now there is one um, that I recommend if you're interested in picking up a slider because the one I picked up was super inexpensive and they're usually expensive and it's so good. And I have told a bunch of my, my video friends and they have all, uh, a handful of them have actually moved over and picked them up as well. And it's, it's cheesy, you guys are gonna laugh. It's by a company called GVM, Great Video Makers. I know, cheesy. They're out of China, uh, but I, don't, I haven't checked their Amazon inventory, but I think I purchased mine off Amazon. I think it was like 300 bucks. And usually for the quality that this thing is, they'd be thousands of dollars, like 1,500, 2,000. I've seen them up to like 2,500. It It's so cool. So if that's something you're interested in. Also, they give you the ability to use your camera for more than just your live stream. If you want to film something and get cool time lapses, using a slider is a great way to do that. Um, you can also stand it straight up and get a nice panning shot and it's all motorized So if you want to put it at a 90 degree angle You can just have the camera going up and down and filming the shot or something very very cool effect, but uh, Highly recommend it if you're if you're looking to spice it up a little bit. Um, okay, so next thing is uh, capture cards. All right, so when you want to improve your video quality and you're moving to uh, a better camera than a webcam you're going to need a capture card. There are a lot of options out there and there are a couple that I will mention. There's one that I'm a really big fan of. Doesn't mean that the others are not as good, but it's the one that I've been using for years. So that is by a company called, I'm gonna open it up here on 
Safari. It's by a company called Elgato. So they make all kinds of products that are specifically related to streaming. Now, I, I've actually recently spoken with uh, one of the guys at Elgato, and they, much like Apogee, are sold out of pretty much everything because everyone's stuck at home and trying to do streams, and so <laughs> they're struggling to you know keep up with uh, the demand. But they offer a ton of capture cards. If you're just running basically the video out of your camera and wanting to get it onto your computer for your stream, this is a great option right here, the Cam Link. So the Cam Link, it's as simple as can be. It's fantastic because it, you can go up to 4K if you want. Obviously, I'm not rocking 4K right now, pretty evident. I'm rocking an uh, epic 720p here, just killing it, 30 frames a second. Wow, try not to be impressed. Um, but you can actually run uh, your video signal out of your camera. So, you know, in the example of the, the guy that I just showed you, he's running out of the output of his camera. I think maybe that camera specifically, I don't remember exactly. I think it uses a mini HDMI. And so he just has a mini HDMI cable that goes mini HDMI to HDMI. And you can see on the cam link, there's an HDMI input. Now, if you're sending a video source, I recommend going with uh, one of these other options. So if you're, let's say, gaming, or you're doing like a, a live concert where you, you have like a animation or something that you have basically like you're triggering something to play at the same time, it's not coming from a camera, uh, like the HD60S or the 60S Plus uh, are great options. You also have, ooh, Fancy. Look at that. Okay. Okay. I see you, Elgato. Getting all fancy with your website. So this is actually what I use. Uh, I'm not using it right now because I have no need to because I don't have a good camera. I'm just running. Basically, my camera goes USB into my computer. But if you're running um, a camera that doesn't connect the digital, uh, doesn't connect digitally, you're going to need to convert that analog signal to digital to run into your computer. It's basically the exact same thing is what Apogee makes, but it's for video instead of for audio. It's converting analog to digital and digital to analog. So it's funny because I actually never put that together till just now. You know, fun times. Okay. Lighting. Lighting is another huge aspect of making your video look good. Now, we talked about this a little bit in the first stream. Um, not going to spend too much time on it, but since, you know, we got the Elgato site up here, they make some of the best uh, lights I've seen in quite a while for streams similar to what I'm doing right now. So this is one of the things that uh, I've been speaking with them that they're going to send me. So there are two different uh, lights they make. They make the Key Light Air and then the Key Light. The Key Light is kind of the, the more advanced version. It gets brighter. The Key Light Air is a little less expensive. It doesn't get as bright, so it does a great job. There are a lot of people, and let's uh, let's do this. Ba -da -bum. I don't know if you guys are familiar with iJustine, but let's see. One week ago, I just it, she has such a great setup, and she's using these. And I want to see if I can find this real quick to show you. Maybe this one. Yes, this is it. So now I'm not just showing you this because she uses a hype mic, even though she does. What? There it is right there. Um, oh, come on, Ad. You're killing me, Smalls. Although I do want to see Aladdin. But okay. So I'm going to jump back here a little bit in the video to right about here. Okay. Boom. Three key lights. You can see them all right there. And hype mic again. Boom. But she basically sets these up, and the lighting is, it, she does a great job. I mean, she is a, a pretty significant streamer, obviously. She posted this video a week ago and has over 800,000 views. Um, yeah, that's, so it's a little bit, you know. Um, and if you want to get a, a full hype mic tutorial, by the way, they cover that in this video, too. So, Lighting. If you don't have the ability to go get like an Elgato, you know, light or something like that because they are hard to get a hold of, I showed you this in the first stream, but what I'm using is a very inexpensive like ring light from Amazon. The price has gone up drastically since everyone's buying all the streaming stuff, but I got my um, 
ring light. Uh, I think it's a 12 inch, it's either 10 or 12 inch ring light. And I have it uh, kind of up here. I'm not shooting it right at my face. Uh, I am kind of bouncing it off the walls to just give like a general light. Um, I'm also lighting myself with my monitor. So the, and it's so funny, I'm so used to looking over, over here. The, the light that you see coming from like, this is, it's a very kind of soft, gentle light. Watch it change right now. Wait for it. Okay, so I'm assuming you should have seen a change there in the lighting because I have uh, a secondary monitor set up right here and I have basically my entire background is a very soft white and I have the brightness of the screen very low. Oh, nice. You got the ring light. Awesome. Yeah, they're 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 pretty uh pretty helpful. Um, but lighting. Another thing to keep in mind with lighting before we move on to the next one is uh, a problem that a lot of people have that I don't hear people talk about too much, and it's a problem that I have, and that's the fact that I wear glasses. And you can see the reflection in my glasses wherever I look, and it's so annoying. But if you get good lights and you have them positioned in the right place, you can avoid that in a way. So you can see, oh, hey, look at that in my glasses. You can see my ring light up there. There it is, right there, that's funny. Um, that's, a, that's a life hack right there. I'll show you, show you things behind the screen. But now watch my glasses. If I was able to set, if I had the right gear basically and I was able to set everything up the way I wanted it to, see how right now you don't really see much of a reflection? Awkward angle because I'm not looking anywhere near the camera, but it's all about placement. And unfortunately, I, you know, with what I have at home, I can't really do that. I kind of did the best I could. So you're not seeing that the entire time I'm talking. That'd be very distracting. But uh, you're seeing, you know, a little bit, bit of glare. But you can get pretty tricky with placement to, um, help you avoid glare if you have glasses like me. Okay, um, next thing, and this is a big one. And it's actually the last thing uh, in this topic, and that is single cam versus, hey, thank you so much, Juan. Single cam versus multicam. So multicam is two cameras. Basically, it gives you the ability to have multiple shots of something, which I would love. I think that would be so uh, fun to have a setup like that here in my home office. And, and I'm hoping to get something like that pretty soon. So maybe in one of these future streams, I'll actually be able to walk you through that. But when you have multiple cameras, uh, it's just different angles you can switch between that, uh, play into the experience that you're giving, uh, your viewers. So if you don't have multiple cameras, uh, the, the motorized slider that I mentioned actually gives you that feel of multiple cameras, because really when you have multiple cameras, it's, it's about catching different views and different angles and having movement to it. When you have a motorized slider, you also have that. So that's one way that people can kind of work around it um, without having multiple cameras. And now that guy I showed you earlier has two cameras and a slider. So he's, he's a, a video guy. All right, guys and gals, here we go. This is the part that I am so excited to talk to you about. That is how to improve the experience of your live streams. So. There are, wow, there are so many different uh, tactics to achieving this. And I'm going to start with a really simple one, your thumbnail, not this one, but the thumbnail that you use on your video to advertise your stream. Thumbnails are everything, especially if you're posting uh, videos uh, on a video content platform like YouTube. If you don't have a good thumbnail, you're not gonna get anywhere near the amount of views. I, I heard someone say this a while ago. I, I, I don't know if this is still the case or not, but even having a good thumbnail or uploading a thumbnail period instead of just having like a shot of your video as your thumbnail, uploading a video actually increases your, um, your ranking, so to speak, for your video and it plays into the YouTube algorithm as far as how people will organically come across your content. If you have wanted to make thumbnails uh, for your videos and you don't know how, a lot of people think they have to have, you know, Photoshop and all kinds of like skill and background. You can do it that way for sure. And I've done it that way, but there is a great resource I want to introduce you guys to. Again, this is one of those things. There are probably 50 different great resources and you guys may know of some as well, but I'm going to show you one that I've used for years and I love. It's so simple. And there are already templates set up inside of it for each of the different streaming platforms that would require a thumbnail. 
uh, you can create a thumbnail for a Facebook video, for a YouTube video, for, you know, whatever. So I'm going to show you what that looks like here. Hop back over to the web browser. And boom. This is called Adobe Spark. Okay, you can go to spark.adobe.com. And basically, you, you see some templates here. There are so many. And it's all about what do you want to create? It is a drag and drop platform that requires no, you know, graphic editing capabilities or skills whatsoever. And it has all of the sizing right for what you want to do. So if I go to view all here, you can see YouTube thumbnail, Twitter post, a teaser video. And you can either start with a template or you can start from scratch and do your own thing, which I is usually what I do. I just select like the template that I want so that it gives me the right sizes. And then I start from scratch. I don't use, you know, any of their graphics. They have so many different options for colors and fonts and layouts. And it's really, really cool. So highly recommend it. If you're wanting to get into streaming more, create good thumbnails, because that's what's going to get people to your stream. And it's going to help your channel or your page or, you know, whatever. It's going to help you grow your following. The next thing, simple, but the content. Okay, so one thing that I hear people say all the time is they, you know, it, it it's, there's validity to it, but it, it is kind of an excuse. People oftentimes think that they have to be a an expert in their field in order to create content that people would want to watch. I have one good friend that is incredibly talented at video, and for years he's been talking about starting a YouTube channel and, um, you know, putting out content, teaching people how to do things. But he just keeps talking about it because he's like, it's like too big for him to to really just you know simplify. It's like all you gotta do is just put one video out. And just think about the one video. As far as content goes, you don't need to be a, an expert in the field that you're talking about. Just talk about what you know. What people love to see, and I know this is so simple, but what people love to see is uh, someone who's engaging. And you don't even have to be talking about something from a technical standpoint like I'm doing. It's okay to just have fun, to be goofy. And that's where it gets into um, you know, what the purpose of your stream is. Because not every live stream or video needs to be something that is technically related. Sometimes it's just a vlog. Sometimes it's about having fun, making people laugh. But you want to be engaging. And this is super important. And I see people miss this all the time. It is so important to engage with your audience. Ask them questions. Talk to them. Get their feedback. I can't tell you how many live streams I've seen where people are not looking at the chat. And that's something that will come with time. The more you're doing live streams, you're going to find it's easier if you just like have a place where you open up your chat, you can have it on your phone or on an iPad or on a screen, it's especially helpful if you have multiple screens, but engaging with your chat is super important. So on that note, let me engage with the chat and ask, how are you guys doing? Does everything make sense so far? Do you have any questions? And by the way, guys, it would be so great if you haven't done so already and we got 35 people in here. It would be wonderful if you would drop us a big old thumbs up on the thumbs up thing. That's also another thing that plays into the YouTube algorithm. And uh, it kind of raises the search, uh, or the yeah, the search ranking in, in the results as far as where and how often it's seen. Okay, it looks like no questions. So engage with your audience. Um, ask them questions. And uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, I missed the templates part. Uh, what site is this? The site that I was just on for creating thumbnails and whatnot, it's called Spark. It's by Adobe. If you go to spark.adobe.com, you got it. Um, yeah. Okay. So enough said on engaging, but just, just pay attention to what people are saying. Uh, another one that's really big and especially a lot of new streamers miss out on is scheduling your stream. You, it's very difficult to promote something that you're not scheduling. So, <laughs> Hey, all right, there we go. We got some hype in the chat. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Um, so, Schedule your stream ahead of time because when you schedule a stream, it gives people the ability to, if they see, uh, you know, this live stream, they see a little thumbnail that's really appealing and it says this will be live on this day at this time. That will be circulating long before there's even a video to watch, a thumbnail and a date and time that it'll be live. 
And if people are logged into YouTube, they can click a button to set a reminder. Cannot tell you what a difference that makes because people will forget. Let's say you schedule your stream for three days from now. That gives you the ability to capture an audience for up to three days that you would not get if you just went live. So, and all of that is done on the back end of whatever platform you're streaming to. If it's YouTube, uh, you would just basically uh, go to the YouTube studio, which is found under your account dropdown in the upper right-hand corner of YouTube. And you open up YouTube studio and you hit the go live button and it's gonna ask you if you wanna go live now or you wanna schedule a stream for the future. You put in the date, the time, all that, you upload your thumbnail, definitely helpful thing to do. Next, choosing the right encoder software. Now, that term, um, oh, wow, that worked out great because I actually just explained the YouTube thing and I hadn't even seen that. So there we go. If you still have any questions, let me know. I can actually walk you through it too if you wanna see it. Um, so encoder software. If you're not familiar with encoder software, we talked about it a little bit last week. Um, I actually showed you an example of some encoder software that uh, probably the most popular option, and that is called OBS. It's what I'm using right now. It's a uh, open broadcast, open, uh, yeah, open source broadcast, uh, or open broadcast software, or something like that. OBS. I, I forget. I think it's open broadcast, open source broadcast software. Something. Uh, Close-ish. Um, it's not the, the best, but it's definitely the most frequently used. So it's free, which is a big part of that. And you can do pretty much everything you want to do in it. Uh, I'll show you what, if you weren't in the stream last week, I'll show you what mine looks like right now. I'm going to add a source. I'm doing this live. And I'm going to do a window capture. Call this OBS. Okay, so this is OBS. Let me make sure that this is showing up the correct way on the stream. Basically, you're seeing, oh yeah, no, that's not what I want to do. I'm glad I, I looked at the stream. I want to do something different here. Okie doke. I'm going to go to this display. That's what I wanted right there. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Oh, you see my notes there in the background? Okay, so <laughs> like free? Yeah. Hey, open broadcast software. Okay, there we go. Oh, you want to know how to send alerts? Um, okay, I'll park that one. We'll go back to that. Okay, so here I have OBS. And I'm going to resize it just a little bit so you can see better what's going on. Um, okay, so this is my software basically that I'm using to broadcast right now. A couple things to point out as I resized here. I'll hide my webcam. Um, a couple things to point out. You can see back here the color of my desktop screen. It's that uh, kind of like a light white or gray. Uh, that's one of the things I'm using to light myself. So. Um, here inside of OBS, I have, uh, in the lower left-hand corner, I have scenes. So let's do this. So I have scenes that I can add. Um, you can see if I hop between some of these different things here, that's what I've set up. Inside of my scenes, I can set sources. I can set my microphone, which I could mute and unmute or hide and unhide. My webcam, which I just hid because it was kind of hiding there in the background of the video. You can see if I click and turn it on, what happens? You can see it nah, just like in the background of the video right here. I just hit it so that it's less distracting uh, for the time being. You can set multiple audio sources. So you can basically plug in an audio interface and send so many channels to this at once. Uh, my friend who is going live for the Knitting Factory in 10 minutes uh, has multiple inputs set up in his Apogee Quartet. Or no, no, he's not. I'm sorry. He's not using a quartet. Another guy was helping using a quartet. He's using an Element 88 and he's got multiple instruments plugged in and a microphone. And he is basically using 
loop back to send audio from Logic that he's got mixed into OBS. So this is uh, an example of a broadcasting software here. And it is definitely the most common. Um, now, there are a lot of options out there. I have mentioned a bunch of them, but I wanna show you one that I love. Um, we're not gonna do a deep dive into it, but I wanna introduce you to it, and there is a reason why. So, this is, let's see, where do I have this guy hidden? All right, there we go. So, let's make sure you can see that in the chat. Cool. So this is Streamlabs OBS. There's a company called Streamlabs that I have been using for years. They have had this, it's their own version of OBS that they've taken, and in my opinion, they have improved it pretty drastically. So you have the ability to do all kinds of things. Uh, let me, I just realized my my little uh, webcam here is in the, the background and somewhat distracting. So check this out, on the fly. What, I'm getting crazy, guys. Okay, let's switch back to OBS, or to Streamlabs OBS. So you have the ability to in OBS, um, add all kinds of overlays, themes, widgets. This is my favorite part of spicing up a live stream. So let me give you an example. Um, you can see right here, and this, this is not exclusive to Streamlabs OBS. This is just something that is incredibly easy to do in Streamlabs OBS. I could do this same exact thing in uh, the version of OBS that I'm using. So let's do this. I want to give you a real life example right now. Okay, we're gonna go to the web browser. This is something that everyone can do. You're more than welcome to follow along as well if you'd like. And if you go to Streamlabs, create an account, you, you have this insane library of overlays and themes and widgets that you can take the code for and insert them into whatever broadcast software you're using, like OBS. So I want you to see what these look like, and then I'm gonna show you why Streamlabs OBS is so powerful. So let's say, um, let's, let's take a look at the themes. There is a crazy library of themes that you can add. So themes are gonna give you everything from like uh, a title at the beginning that says, you know, stream starting soon. And then you could add a widget on top of that that would give a timing countdown, like 10 minutes out and then counting down, you know, the seconds and minutes. Um, and these theme packs come with a whole bunch of different stuff like animations. Look at the animation there, it's so cool. So this one specifically obviously is for gaming, but you can trigger these themes, you can set them up as sources basically and trigger them to, basically happen at any point. One that I love, and this is a little distracting, so I'll go back to this one. One that I love, and you know, because I'm a gamer, I have streamed games for, you know, I've streamed games for a little while. You would not believe how this changes the experience for people that are starting to, you know, trying to grow their audience. Adding things like a widget that gives some kind of animation on the screen every time someone subscribes, all of a sudden, every single person subscribes because they want to see their name up there with a little animation. Anytime you get a donation, it pops their name up on the screen, gives another little animation, maybe plays a sound. Uh, you can add widgets for things like uh, songs. So if you want uh, to give... <laughs> oh, you've seen these before? Cool, cool. Awesome, I'm glad you guys are digging this. So let's say you want to add a widget for music. You can actually create a, almost like a virtual DJ who gives a list of songs that you've selected ahead of time because you don't want to deal with copyright strikes and stuff, but you can determine or define like, here are 20 different songs that uh, I'm setting up for this playlist for this stream in, in this uh, music widget. 
and you can actually open it up so that people in your stream can continue to be a part of your stream by voting for the song they want to play next in the background over what you're doing. It's pretty cool. There is a really, uh, really good one that I want to point out. It's called, uh, let's see here. It's right under what we have selected now. And I'll just go to it. So it's right here. It's called CloudBot. So the CloudBot, oh my gosh, you guys. This is going to change the experience of streaming for you, just this thing alone. So the CloudBot, and there are a lot of options out there. For a long time, I used one called Nightbot. Um, and until Streamlabs put out their version of the Nightbot called CloudBot. The CloudBot gives you the ability to do everything from have a moderator in your stream. So if you're doing a friendly family stream, for example, well, you, you're going to get demonetized or you're going to get banned or kicked if there are people swearing, things like that. So you can have your CloudBot or your, your chatbot basically moderate everything in your stream so that people can't do things that you don't want them to do because if you're doing something like i'm doing i try you know to look back at the chat as often as possible but i might miss something and you know, like i might miss something and catch it two or three minutes later but if someone's like going crazy saying all kinds of like nutty stuff and you're like dude this person needs to not be here your cloud bot will take care of that if you've determined what is and is not allowed it'll boot them out it'll warn them first and hide what they're doing and if they're continuing to break the rules, it just boots them out. And then you, you don't have to worry about like getting demonetized and all that stuff. Um, there's another one that I really love. And that is, let me see. Oh yeah, it's giveaways. So it's something that I have really wanted to incorporate into this stream, except for the fact that uh, this is not my personal channel. So this is Apogee's channel. And I don't want to add, you know, something into the channel that's going to confuse other people that stream on this platform because there are tons of other people streaming on our channel. But you can add uh, this chatbot, which will give you the ability to do giveaways based on predetermined conditions. And let me explain what I mean. So let's say, and this is another huge way to grow your audience. Let's say that you, um, like we are today, we're giving away a, uh, a mic plus. Uh, just a little bit, uh, probably like 10 minutes, 15 minutes from now. And if I had, if this was my channel, I would add this chatbot into the stream and I would set a list of predetermined conditions to enter the giveaway. So predetermined conditions would be, um, I usually, like when I would do this, I would usually do like three, maybe four things. So you have to be subscribed to the channel. You have to drop a like on the video. Uh, and you have to type, you know, this word, like whatever I say, like I predetermine it. You have to type this word into the chat. If someone meets the criteria for all three of those, so I would say, hey guys, all right, we're going to do our giveaway. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you've liked the video uh, and then type, uh, you know, Mike plus into the chat, right? If I had set that up and predetermined it, my chatbot would run the whole thing. It would randomly select the person based on the criteria. If someone was typing that word in, but they hadn't done these other things, the chatbot checks on that. So it's a great way to grow your audience. You could say things like, make sure you turn on uh, post notifications so you don't miss another live stream. No, even people that don't care about your content, honestly, are gonna do it and they'll think, oh, I can just turn it off later and it, no one turns it off. It's really, really helpful. Um, and the last one I wanna talk about under Streamlabs is tips so you have the ability to add uh, it's like a, a tip jar basically to your stream so if people like the content and you would not believe uh how often this happens not just for gaming for everything but when you're doing live streams people want to say thank you and so if you set up uh, the tip option in streamlabs obs it actually takes care of all the processing and everything and there isn't even a fee i don't know how they do it it's crazy and it just basically gets deposited into your uh, Streamlabs account. And then whenever you want, you just transfer it out of Streamlabs to your bank account. When I first started streaming games, I had tips set up. And every now and then, like someone would tip me. When I added a widget that turned tipping me into a game, it got crazy. Oh, I mean, the very first time. I added this little widget. It's called, you'll see it on Streamlabs. It's called um, Stream Boss. So silly. And it was basically all based on uh, whoever gave the biggest donation 
it would make them the stream boss and it would put their name up in the top corner. And then you could knock them out of their position by donating more. And it became this game. And I'm, I was thinking like, this is silly. And I'm like, guys, is this dumb? Like, I feel gimmicky, you know, like there's no, you don't have to like donate. Like, I don't care. I just wanted to try it out. And they're like, no, this is fun. We, we actually get to do something fun here while we're hanging out in the stream. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. But you know, these are all things that professional streamers in, in all genres know about and do. They have the animated overlays because people want to get the shout out. They want to get the attention on the stream, right? They want to see their name. They screenshot it and they'll post, they'll do a, you know, a tweet like, dude, I was in so-and-so stream, whatever. So let's see. Uh, yeah, it's like a leaderboard. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Cody needs a tip jar. Appreciate that. Thanks. Um, so anyway, that's Streamlabs. Now, Jumping back a little bit, why is Streamlabs OBS so cool? Well, one of the reasons, besides the fact that I think the layout is just way cleaner, all of these things that I'm talking about are already built into it. So we were on the website there and we're looking at all of these options. Anyone can go there, it's free to sign up and 99% of everything that I've mentioned is free. If you wanna add it to your stream and you're using something like OBS, you'd basically define everything the way you want it and it would give you this code and then you'd take that code go into obs and enter the code and you know it's 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 more of a process with streamlabs obs it's literally built in you just click yep this 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 and it boop, just pops up on the screen really really convenient another great thing um about streamlabs obs is once you configure it the way you want like you've got your your themes set up and your name and you you know you got your camera and all that stuff set up it's all cloud based to your account so let's say that i go to a friend's house or uh, i go to some conference that i'm speaking at i can open it up on any computer and it's exactly the same as the way i set it up at my house really really cool a lot of benefits okay last thing i want to talk about here is, oh, let's see. Should I start with, uh, I'm going to look at the, the chat here real quick. Should I start with OBS first or just go to Streamlabs OBS? I would just I would just go to Streamlabs OBS. Um, I think it's great. It just came out for the Mac. Uh, it's been on Windows for a while and I've used it on Windows. But as I you know said jokingly last week, I am a self-proclaimed Windows card. So I, like I'm, a, I'm an Apple fanboy and an Apogee fanboy through and through. Um, but it was only available on Windows. And so when I was doing gaming stuff, you know, most gamers, uh, if they're doing streaming, are doing it on a PC. And so I was using a PC and I was using the, the Windows version of it. Now, I have been watching that site like a hawk because it said Mac version coming soon for like a year and a half. It literally came out four weeks ago. So um, it's if you're using it on Mac, uh, the first time I opened it, it crashed last week or two weeks ago. And so I was like, oh, no, maybe it's not stable. Well, since then, this whole last week, I've opened it up and I've really you know, just kind of done a deep dive and tested it a bunch. I haven't had a single other issue with it. Although as it is brand new, it is like a V1.0 launch, like hasn't even been an update to it because it came out four weeks ago. Um, it doesn't quite have as much as um, the Windows version does, and it doesn't quite have as much as uh, the regular version of OBS does. So there are still some features that they will be adding over time to the Apple or the, yeah, the Mac version basically. Uh, but for the most part, all the general basic stuff, it does that. So I would, I feel very confident unless you're doing something really, really crazy. If you're just doing a simple stream, absolutely. I would say go with, um, go with Streamlabs OBS. It's, it's fantastic. I have not heard a single person ever say anything negative about it. And there are plenty of people that hate on the regular version of OBS. So <laughs> yeah, right. Dip for real. Okay. So there is one more thing that I want to tell you guys about. And that is called Stream Deck. So well, actually, let's go back. Let's go back to the web browser and let me show you guys something here. Pretty cool. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, so brand new company. I know you never heard of Elgato. Haven't talked about them like 10 times already in the stream, but they have where Stream Deck. Here we go. They have this, um, product called Stream Deck. It started out as a product like this that I will open up and show you right now. 
And there's a reason that I'm telling you about this. So Stream Deck is going to give you the ability to, it's a piece of hardware, very similar to something like my, my Go XLR I have here. It just sits on your desk during your live stream. And it gives you the ability to trigger anything in OBS or Streamlabs OBS. What I'm doing right now is I am literally like for everything I'm changing, I have to go to the other monitor and then I have to click and like do all this stuff while you guys are waiting live. If I had a stream deck right here, I could just hit the button and automatically transition to the next scene. I could queue things up. I could do like my animations, my overlays, uh, whatever I want. You can program all of that into the stream deck ahead of time. So you can see here, uh, this is basically all uh, programmable uh, features. So reason I mention it, whoops, is because if you don't have a stream deck, well, you probably do have a stream deck and you didn't know you have it. So if I drop down uh, the little stream deck window here, you can see, wait, what? Mobile stream deck? What? You can download it onto your smart device, iPhone, iPod, iPad, and I'm sure a whole bunch of other uh, smart device uh, types out there. But you can link on your, uh, I'm gonna just stay, uh, say iOS device, okay, cool. And you can do it on with all the Google stuff too. So, but you basically can link your phone or your iPad or whatever to OBS or Streamlabs OBS and control the whole thing from your phone or your iPad, which is so much better. Um, and it adds a lot to your stream as well. You know, it's the same kind of thing as you guys are watching me. It's, you see how, and I, I know this stuff, I do it a lot, but you can still see how it's like, uh, if I go to do something that I wasn't planned for, someone asks a question, I wanna show them something. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, give me a second and I do this. It, it makes such a difference to be able to go to things like immediately when you wanna to go to them. So, yeah. All right, guys. Let me pull up the chat here. We are going to do a little transition. So that is the teaser for this week, okay? Here's my hope. Um, yes, and absolutely, you can do a, a MIDI video uh, controller, well, a MIDI like scene controller as well. So if you have a MIDI device, you can actually like trigger whatever scenes and um, sources and all that stuff that you want also. So thank you for reminding me. I meant to, meant to mention that and I forgot. Um, okay, there's a couple questions I'm gonna get to in a second. This, my hope with today was that it does a little bit of what the very first stream I did is. So in the first stream, I mentioned a bunch of things kind of uh, generically, and I noticed I got so many emails that following week asking me about the same, uh, or, or to go in kind of deeper on some of the things that I talked about. So that was my hope with today. Here's what would be great if you guys if I mentioned something that it would really be great, you know, and you'd love it if I did a deeper dive on it, I want to hear from you. So send me, uh, actually, no, I've been having people send me an email on our website. If you go to apogeedigital.com, there is a form. It's kind of a questionnaire. So we have this set up and it's basically keeping all of these questions now uh, organized for me in a Google sheet. Go to apogeedigital.com and click on the learn from home button. And I would love to hear from you. If there's something specific that would be helpful for you guys to do a deeper dive on, that's what we'll do. Um, so this helps though, because it kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that are out there. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna take a look at the chat. I'm gonna answer a couple questions and then we're gonna do the giveaway. Uh, let's see, I'm using a Mac. Uh, I'm a streaming newbie. Uh, so I'll check out Streamlabs OBS. Thanks for the recommendation. And <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome, Lee, absolutely. And if you have any questions, I mean, please let me know. It's a process, uh, you know, as you get up and running with this stuff, I, I have helped the last four or five weeks more people than I can possibly tell you. Like all I'm doing all day, every day is helping people set up their streams, it feels like. And every single person has a different configuration and a different setup. And so it's like figuring out some of the craziest ways to make things work. So um, there are we could do one of these a week and cover something different for the next like five years. And I've jokingly said that around the office and we have another guy at the office who is now kind of doing a, a deep dive into a lot of the streaming stuff too. And we, you know, just speaking on the phone yesterday, he was like, dude, you weren't joking. When you say there are a million different options out there, it's like, and it's a never ending thing, but 
Uh, Lee, yes, I recommend d uh, do a deep dive into OBS. And, uh, you know, if it's if I get enough questions about it, w we can actually do that together here really soon. So lots of tools. Yeah, absolutely. Great info, mind blown. Yay, that's amazing. I'm so happy to hear you guys uh, are enjoying it. That's awesome. Giving us tons of great stuff and ideas. Uh, you've explained things clearly. You explained the benefits, features. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Lee. I really appreciate it. And do it twice a week. I would do it twice a week, man. I'm down. I'm down. I'll, uh, I'll bring that up with the team and see if they give me the, uh, the thumbs up there. Oh, thank you so much, Susan. I really appreciate it. Okay, well, let's do this. Uh, ch ch oh, wait, a couple more here in the chat. There's a little bit of a delay, by the way. If you guys have never streamed, uh, just so you know, it's interesting because I can see myself in OBS over here on this screen, and then over here I have YouTube open so that I can see the chat, but there is about a 45 to 60 second delay from what I'm doing live. So when I ask you guys a question, hey, Ryan, what's up, buddy? Uh, when I ask you guys a question, I usually have to wait like 30, 45, maybe 60 seconds till I actually see the responses here in the chat. So let's take a look here at what you guys are saying. Cover the essentials in a deep, deep. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I really, really appreciate that. I've been on the fence about streaming content, uh, but these, oh, that's so cool. I'm very excited to hear that you guys, it seems like a lot of people are saying the same thing. A lot of you guys are feeling encouraged to do a deep dive and start streaming. I'm telling you, it's a blast. It is so fun engaging with people and it's addicting. You're going to find yourself going down this rabbit trail of doing, you, you'll start out and you're going to feel like, oh man, like there's a lot to learn and you, you're figuring stuff out. And every person in here, I'm more than happy to help you as much as possible because you're going to have questions. You're going to get stuck and everyone I'm sure has a different, uh, platform they're streaming to and different, you know, hardware setup and then different broadcasting software they're using. And so I, I'm more than happy to help you figure that out. But the best thing I could say is just give it a try. You know, don't worry about it being perfect because it's not going to be perfect at the beginning, but you're going to find the more you do it, a lot of the stuff becomes second nature and uh, it's just going to continue to get better and better until the point basically where you're a gigantic nerd like me and you're gonna be like, dude, check out my setup. Like I'm doing this. It's fun. Uh, I appreciate that, Paul. Thank you so much. Good. I'm glad you guys know about the delay. Cool. Cool. Exactly. Robert. Okay. So, you know, this is a great point. And I, I touched on this earlier, but uh, Robert said, it's hard to know what to ask when you don't know what exists, which is exactly why I'm doing this. You know, so last week I did a deep dive into source connect. So many people had asked about that and we were talking about what to do this week. And I felt like there, there are all these things that people don't even know exist yet. And there's still so much more, but it's like a figure if I kind of intro you to some of this stuff, then, you know, you'll know, oh, wow, okay, can I do this with this? It'll kind of connect some dots. So we'll probably do a few more of this style in the coming weeks. I do want to let you know what we're looking at doing here probably for next week, maybe the next couple weeks. And this is, this is really, really cool. So we're doing a little bit of a, a real life use case scenario and a, a little bit of a diversion from the last three. Uh, it will come back to the style, but Probably starting next week, we're going to be doing real-time live interviews with some of the greatest experts in these areas of streaming. So I won't, I won't tell you who. And they, they all have kind of different expertise and different specialties, and there are different fields that they're in. So some of them, it's doing this for voiceover. Some of it, it's doing it for like house of worship and churches. Some of it, it's doing for actors so it's going to be really fun. Another retirement project. Awesome. Um, oh, dude, that's amazing. Wow. You stole the sheets off the bed last week to try a green screen. How did it work? I'm really curious. On that note, just really quick before we uh, go to the giveaway, anyone trying to do green screen, chroma key, whatever, very easy to do, but two things are really important. Color consistency of your backdrop. So if you have a green screen, it's very important that it is not changing shades of green that there aren't shadows on certain places it really needs to be consistently the same color and it needs to be well lit so shadows on a green screen will change the color of the screen in that area and then it's going to mess up when you go to like chroma key or like cut out what's behind you um awesome alerta i appreciate it okay well with that said i think we're going to go ahead and wrap up for now which means giveaway time okay Opening up my phone here because uh, 
Marlene text me the winner. All right. So should we do it again? All right, guys, you're at home. This is like social distancing new norm. Hey, I appreciate it, Doma. Thank you. Go ahead and get that drum roll going. Throw some drum roll emotes in the chat as I pull up the winner here. Next week on Thursday, we do have a special guest, an amazing musician who's going to be doing a live stream next Thursday on our channel, Madam Gandhi. If you've not heard her, oh my gosh, you're in for a treat. She's amazing. All right, guys. Woo! Here we go. I'm so excited. Before I announce the winner of today's giveaway. Yeah, dude, got those drum emotes. Shoot. If you haven't done so already, I know I've already mentioned, but it would be in the world if you guys would drop a like on the video. Uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel uh, and you're enjoying this content, please do because it's really helpful to us because it helps us. You know, the more it grows, we know, okay, like people like this and we can continue to put out more of this type of content. Um, and that said, I want to say a big old congratulations to Matthew Klein. You are today's winner. So it was funny because right when I read your name on my phone, I was like, oh, he just chatted in there too. So Matthew, um, someone from our team, probably uh, Marlene, will be reaching out to you via email that you put in the registration for the class and we'll get you all set up. So guys, let's get some hype in the chat for Matthew. Congrats, man. Can't wait to see uh, what awesome stuff you create with your new Mic Plus. It's awkward when you're like hype in the chat and it's like, oh, they, they, they didn't hear that yet. No, that's, uh... Oh, there's the hype. Woo. All right. Hype in the chat. Guys, thank you as always so much. Really having a blast hanging out with you. Sorry, camera's over here. Keep forgetting. Really having a blast hanging out with you guys. I hope that you're uh, leaving with some uh, some more helpful information. I cannot wait to see you know what you guys come up with. So if you ha are starting a channel, you're going to start streaming somewhere, let us know. We'd love to check it out. Maybe throw some ideas or pointers out there. And uh, with that said... I hope you all have a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, and I will catch you all next Thursday for Madam Gandhi and then Friday for the class. Cool.